You're listening to the Finding Careers In podcast. I'm Pete Newsom. I'm with Ricky Baez again today. Ricky, how are you? I got my coffee and my Darth Vader cup. It cannot be better today. Awesome. It's a great Friday here in Florida. And today we are going to talk about something else that you could make great, which is your first day at work, how to make a winning impression. What do you think about that, Ricky? I, Pete, that's, that's a great idea. As soon as you told me about this one, I'm like, spot on. Too many, too many episodes out there, other episodes out there about what to do before, what to do the middle of your job's life cycle or how to leave gracefully, but never on your first day to start on the right foot. I love this topic. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. So I've been told. That's right. That is right. Unless, uh, no, the, no, unless that's a hundred percent, right? <laughs> is there an alternative? <laughs> there is no alternative. You You're right. I was to trying to find a counterpoint, but time. there isn't one. No, no, no counterpoint. All right. So let's, so let's start at the top. Then you're, you're yep. going into your new job. Um, now what's interesting is, uh, you know, so many new jobs are not, uh, on site today. So that, that is a consideration, right? I mean, what a different thing that, that people have to encounter. I'll say, um, you know, even young people going into their first professional job where it may be virtual. That's a weird thing to, for me to think about. I haven't really wrapped my brain around that um, entirely and, and how that's going to affect the workforce as a whole. What do, you, what do you think about that before we really get into this too much? Honestly, Pete, I think putting myself in the position of a leader with somebody starting brand new and then also putting myself as the employee starting brand new in a virtual environment, I think we will both we will both be nervous to give each other the wrong impression. If me as a leader, I don't reach out too much to the employee in a virtual environment on the very first day or the or the first week, then maybe the employee is going to think I don't care about them. Whereas really, I'm like, I just want to give them some space. And maybe the employee is like, wait a minute, I got to make sure that I, I, I don't come across as I'm not working so they kind of overcompensate. I really think both sides are nervous at first. You don't think yeah, so? Well, well, yeah, well, in your virtual, and we've ha had this happen now since since COVID and, and we've stayed virtual with the staffing business. We've hired mm -hmm. employees from out of state and their first day was online. Their only right. days have been online and it and it's an adjustment period for, for all involved. Um, what I think is just is specifically unique is in, in a little bothersome are people who, who only their only job, you know, their first job is online, right? I mean, what a different experience that, that these professionals will have than has existed at any other time, um, you know, in history. Uh, yeah. And I, mean, I guess there were some remote jobs prior to COVID. We know that, but um, the world is having to adjust and adapt to that in a way that, um, you know, really kind of happened overnight for lack of a better way to put it. So, th so this is where that leader or that trainer or that HR department, they really need to roll out an interesting red carpet to make sure that that employee feels welcomed, right? Even in this kind of an environment. And you and I have talked about this on the show before, where even, even if you resign from your previous position, you're going to start a new one. I don't care how comfortable you are with that new position before you start. There's always something in the back of your head that's, that's doubting. Did you make the right decision? Right. So from a leader's perspective, it's a good idea to really roll out the uh, red carpet to make sure the employees are feeling welcome. But that's not what this show is about. This show is about that candidate on day one. So new employee and we'll, and we'll keep uh, both in mind, right? Yep. Virtual and on site. We have to these days. We, we have yeah. to con con consider each. So I think it really starts with knowing what to expect and it be, you mentioned being nervous. That's natural. I think anytime you're walking into a new situation, you're going to have uh, questions and doubts. And the best way to um, you know, to alleviate those doubts is to ask questions about what to expect from your manager, from the person you're going to be reporting to. Um, maybe it's maybe it's someone in HR who's guiding you through the onboarding process. That's not uncommon for um, a lot of new positions to begin with HR initially mm -hmm. before being passed off to their department and their specific yeah. hiring manager. But the most important thing going in is to ask as many questions as you need to, in order to, uh, to be comfortable and know what, what it is you're, you're really walking into on that first day. Yes. So ask as many questions that way you are aware. Now, 
I'm going to go on the opposite side of that also, Pete, because I do know I have seen some people that they are so focused on trying to make a good first impression. They want to showcase what they got. And as soon as they go in there, as soon as they start training or orientation or just meeting all the stakeholders, they start making suggestions about what needs to be changed. Let's change this. Let's do that because they feel the need to showcase. That's not the time for you to showcase your skills unless you're asked. This is the time to listen ask questions and really take in what that culture has to offer. Even if you think, you know, you can run it better, pause for a second and get to know the people who are training you. So are you suggesting that uh, revamping, you know, trying to revamp corporate strategy is not a good idea to do on day one at your new job? <laughs> I mean, hold on. Let me see. Let me. No, not not on day one. Not a good idea. Wait, wait yeah. for day two. <laughs> we can try to take the, the CEO's yeah, right? job. No, we're we're kidding, of course, about that. Yeah. But that's a great point and great advice. Don't feel the need to perform early. You're there to learn, and um, you know, I think that's a, it. Is probably a natural inclination that people will have. Let me let me show that I belong. Let me show that I was a good hire, and let me do that yeah. early and often. Do it often once you have the chance, but early we would advise against that Listen, for, for yeah. sure. And and no one's expecting that of you. Uh, uh, you know, it not your first day. That's for sure. Every job has a, you know its own unique ramp, ramping up period or training period, whatever that might be. But in your first day, I, I can't think of many jobs where uh, you're expected to do anything anything but but learn and absorb as much information Correct. as you can. That's right. And may, may, many white collar jobs, right? It's I would venture to guess, like as an electrician, right? Something very different, where you've got twenty years of experience. You start, you know how to not die from electrocution. You're good. <laughs> yeah, that's the right. hope. That, that's what we're that's, that's what hope. we're hoping yeah. for for sure in, in that yeah. scenario. So, um, other than electricians and 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 certain uh, you know jobs where you would hit the ground running, go in looking to learn and absorb on your first day. That's right. Um, but prior to that. You know, you want to know how to dress. That that's another point yes. that I think is really big. And so many of these uh, things that we'll talk about on today's show can you know you you just need to ask you know and, mm -hmm. and make a list. And so I'll just say as a, as a uh, quick point that on ZenGig.com we have a blog article about this uh, very topic. And so refer to that. It's a checklist on, and we have that too. We have a checklist on what to, to do for your first day. So we'll put those links in the show notes. So you can uh, refer back to those. If you're already bored with listening to us talk, you'll, you'll have that um, information to look at, but knowing how to dress is, is, is an important thing, whether you're online or in person, because if you show up um, underdressed, mm -hmm. which is, which is a, something you never Always want to do a no -no. in a professional yeah. setting, then mm -hmm. Yeah, that that would just make you uncomfortable on your first day, and yeah, you, know, you probably wouldn't make the right impression uh, going in. And in in so ask, but in the event you don't know or nobody answers that question for you, it is a, always a hundred times better, Pete, to show up overdressed than underdressed. Why is always that? better? Why is right. That? So, I'm sorry. Why is that exactly? I mean, we we know that, but why? Mm -hmm. Why? Why? Explain why for because, someone who, you know, who may think, "Hey, who cares what I wear? They need to like me for <laughs> me, Ricky. They need to accept, I mean, accept sure. me as who I am." Yeah, because that's why on first dates we dress up crappy, right? <laughs> that's why because we have to show our best foot, right? So here's the thing: I'm going to give two scenarios. Somebody who shows up to the office on day one in shorts and flip flops, they're all they are automatically going to make an assumption about you. <laughs> they really are. And it's not going to create a good first impression for you. Now, obviously, that's an extreme, right? But if you show up in jeans and a college shirt where nobody else is wearing jeans, you're going to stand out the wrong way. They're going to wonder who is that one guy not following the rules. They don't know you're new, right? The other people I'm talking about. Now, let's switch. Let, let's let's make that switch. Let's say everybody wears just khakis and a polo shirt. You just happen to show up in a suit. That's a good first impression. Right now, they'll let you know. They'll be like, "Hey, it's a uh, we don't dress like that here right now." But just hey, good job. <laughs> right? Well, it would give a better first impression than showing up underdressed. And, and like you know, pretty much everything we could talk about to, uh, on uh, and we'll talk about today, it's ask in advance because you, you mentioned an electrician earlier. If the electrician shows up on day one in a suit, it's probably not going to go so well um, <laughs> for them, right? You're, you're so you know, just just know uh, what is expected. Um, in that particular environment and know that each environment has its own culture 
and expectations for for dress code. And right. really, if you if you're in a new role, entering in a new role, ask for the employee handbook in advance. That's a great if they if, yes. if the company will provide that to you. Some will, some won't. But that's a great thing to review in advance, just so you um, you know, can be armed with as much information as you possibly can going in. That's right. I agree 100. percent Awesome. All right. So next thing let's talk about is when's lunch? When the heck is lunch? Ah. Now that, that seems, that seems like something that you, you think, you know, do you really need to ask about it up front? But maybe, right. You know, it's common in a lot of scenarios to bring a new employee out to lunch on their first day. Um, maybe everyone brings their lunch and no one goes out in that, in that particular environment. And if you want to uh, be able to participate in that on day one, you should yeah, may, you at least be aware of that information, whether you choose to do it on your own break is, is, is different, but to know what time and, and how that works again, every, every company has their own unique way of approaching those things. Do people go to lunch at 11 or do they go at 1230 and, mm-hmm. You, you, you know, you should probably ask about that just in, in not, not in terms of you know, making it um, too much about non-work issues, but I think that's a really relevant question for people to know, Hey, what should I be prepared for? Um, you know, when, when at lunchtime, how, how, do, how do things work? I think it's a good, you know, logical thing to, to know upfront. I wish more people would ask for that. Right. Because, you know, as 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 um, HR pros and in uh, new employer orientation employees, when we're welcoming people on board, we have to make sure that, OK, we let them know what the rules and regulations are, because you really don't know as an employee or as a brand new employee. You, some organizations don't want you to have lunch at your desk. Some Good organizations point. want you to go to the cafeteria. Right. So ask for that upfront now. As a leader, for all the leaders out there listening, when somebody starts and um, um, on my team working for me, obviously I'm going to have some conversations on that week before before we start. But I tell them, don't bring if you if you're a lunch packer, don't bring anything on Monday. We're going out as a team. I let the person know what to expect. Right. I answer that question for them. So for all the leaders listening, make sure you you quiet every single voice in the back of that candidate's mind about the doubt they have about starting in that position. And you can start doing that by letting them know what lunch looks like next week. That's 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 a great way to do it. Right. And and if you know for leaders to take care of this up front, it's great. But as I've always said uh, in staffing, if if we think of 100 things, there's going to be 101 that we didn't think of. Um, and, and, you know, lunch probably isn't on a lot of people's minds up until they get there that day and say, oh, we probably should have talked about this ahead of time, but, um, <laughs> that's why we're doing this show. So let's, let's so, then, then, yeah, go ahead. Can I ask something, so, yeah. something real quick, because something just hit me. Can we go back to number two again on how to dress? Because we did sure. talk about, um, um, how to show up to the office, but what about when you're at home virtually? Because you're so comfortable at home, right? Still ask, what is the expectation to show up on camera? Just because you are home on the company's dime, it doesn't mean that you can dress however you want. Still ask the the uh, the uh, the uh, leader, what is the expected dress code, even in a virtual situation? It, it, it could surprise you. Uh, absolutely, same thing applies. And yeah. and and I think the in all of these um, scenarios, the message is don't assume. You know, right. which is what right. you you were just saying. Don't assume because you're home that you know, you can show up in your pajamas. Um, rarely is that acceptable. Um, but uh, the way I'm dressed right now, I'm wearing a, a t-shirt. I you know, for up until uh, COVID, never in my career did I did I wear a t-shirt to work, um, and, yeah. and it never even occurred to me. Um, but now it's different. Right. Yep. In, in the environment where I am, if that I'm home, I don't have any um, meetings scheduled with clients today. So, yeah, I'm 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 OK getting away with this. I mean, some days I even sit at my desk wearing a hat, which, um, <laughs> again, it's just foreign, foreign yeah. to me, but even well, though I'm the one doing it. So we're learning these work at home, um, what's acceptable and what isn't as we go. But again, in not every a company is going to be okay with how I'm dressed right right now. And uh, that is a given. And and so to your point, it's a great one. Ask, clarify up front. That's right. So 
if, if, if you think of someone you know, showing up on their first day, what to bring is, is, a, is a huge piece of this. And we probably should have should have started with that, right? Because you know, we talked about what to wear. Well, what else do you need to bring? Do, do you need to bring any of your own equipment? Um, some companies give out cell phones. Most companies will give out uh, computers, but not all, right? There are mm -hmm. jobs where you may have to bring that. Do you need writing utensils? Do, do you need um, you know, any kind of supplies to, to, to get through the day? And again, you, I would say most people probably walk in not thinking about that, not having asked yep. that question. Most managers probably don't cover that either, but it'd be, it's an easy thing to do. It's an easy box to check uh, for a new employee. And that's why we're talking about this here because it just saves any potential embarrassment, right? Or, or discomfort. And that's really what the first day is all about yeah. <laughs> is, to, is to have it go as smoothly as possible on both sides. So um, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to take that a step further, right? Because I honestly don't think we have to do that for the reasons we think we need to do it, right? I, yes, bring all those things. Be prepared. Nine times out of ten, the organization you're going to work for has all those things there. But in the very rare case, it doesn't. You want to, at the very least, show that you're prepared. This is all part of the of the first impression um, uh, uh, pie. That's all this is, Pete, because even even if somebody says, oh, you know, it, let's write this down and everybody's pulling stuff that they got from the uh, supplier room, you bring out your own stuff, you're prepared, right? Versus you assuming like, I need a paper clip, <laughs> right? So this is all, even if you don't need it, if you know they're going to have it, bring it anyway, it's all part of the first impression process. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. So when should oh. you arrive? <laughs> okay. what Can I jump on I this one first? <laughs> okay. So we, I we used skipped to head to lunch, right? We, so you can tell what, what, where our minds are. And anyone who listens to this show regularly that will know <laughs> that uh, food is a regular topic. So we went, we, we went to, 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 to lunch right away, but you know, going, go back it up from that is what time should I, what time should I arrive? You don't want to take, you, you don't want to take that for granted, right? On either side. That that it's a really balance, be Pete. <laughs> it's a balance because I see situations that people arrive right on the dot, which I'm like, huh? And I see situations that the uh, we open up at 8 a.m. and at 6:15, I get a call from the security guard saying, "This is a strange car in the parking lot. <laughs> Do you know who this person is? They look like they're waiting for new employee orientation." Don't go too early. Just there's nothing wrong with showing up 15 to 20 minutes early, especially if there's any type of I-9 information that needs to be covered that's not accounted for. Always. 15, 20 minutes early is a sweet spot. No less than that, no more than that. And folks, please don't show up right on the dot. That just shows what the rest of that employee life cycle is going to look like from an attendance perspective. So early is on time and on time is late, right? I mean, that that's right. the golden rule of of yeah. when to show up and just adhere to that. Um, it's 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 such a simple thing. And so you know, when you when you if you have to drive. Uh, if you're commuting, if you're not online, if you're online, there's really no excuse. Just you know, be, be early. It, it, you know, be you don't have to be 20 minutes early. And in fact, let, let, I, I think it's worth clarifying because yes. when Zoom um, uh, rooms are used today, so, uh, often they're shared. And so there's there's an argument to be made that showing up too early for a Zoom may present its own awkward scenario. In fact, you and I experienced that. Um, <laughs> a number of months ago where I had a previous meeting, we were using my zoom room and you popped in, which was fine. Right. Uh, because my, but my, it wasn't your fault. My meeting ran late and <laughs> you, you had a very surprised look on your face when you popped in. Here's what, you happened. Here's what happened. I was going, I I, I, you didn't even give me time. To I'm like, to Oh, people. I'm interrupting. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I just left. <laughs> and, and that and that's how it felt, right? For you, yeah. I think. And that's yeah. and, and so we were all, you know, it was, it was funny to laugh about, but that's not what you it, it, it's very different from you and I experiencing that situation together than an employee on their first day Correct. who may pop into uh, um someone else's Zoom and it may create an awkward moment that's again going to just make that employee feel awkward. No one else will care, I'm sure. And it'd probably be something to laugh about later, but in the moment, you don't want to do that. So if you're on Zoom, 
arrive, you know, show up two minutes early. That, that that's would right. be my advice there, right? That's Let's right. go yeah. ahead and set that um, as the standard. Two minutes early, no more, <laughs> no less. But and and if you're late, right? It, it's it normally if you're late, it's 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 nine times out of ten, it's because you had a previous meeting right? That, that ran over, but that's when you use the tools that are available to you and say, I'm going to be late. You and I do that all the time, right? If you and I are going to be late, we text each other. Hey, I need five minutes, right? Because it's not because I'm stuck in traffic. It's because I'm stuck in another meeting, right? And sometimes it's easy for meetings to go over, but that's when you schedule it with a buffer and you should be good. Well, let's make the point. You can't be late on your first day. That's right. It cannot it happen. Cannot. So right. if you're on zoom, no excuse. Make sure that all your technology works ahead of time. That's on you, right? Mm -hmm. That That's a given. But um, if you're in person, the easiest way to do that is to make the drive ahead of time. Do it at the same time in, in traffic. You know, usually it, there's the, the commute's going to be longer if it's, if it's in a, any kind of rush hour traffic. But make that extra effort to, to leave, to create the right impression from the start. It's, it's worth it. Because we've you know, we've all experienced if you've been in the workforce for any period of time, employees that show up late and it just is a little, a little, little uh, dark cloud, you know, over mm -hmm. you on the first day that you don't. don't Absolutely. Want. And now, as a recruiter, back when I used to recruit on a on a Friday afternoon, because one of the things that I could not stand is people showing up to work late on Monday uh, for new employer teaching or ghosting me. So I will call them on Friday. And I'm like, hey, so you, we are so excited for you on Monday. We got this waiting for you. Um, you know how to get here. You know what time to get here. Do you know what time to come in? And they're like, oh, no, perfect, Ricky. We got it. All right. Are you considering the I-4 buffer? And they're like, what? I-4 buffer. I don't care what your morning news person says about I-4. Always assume a 40-minute delay. <laughs> That's what I call the I. That first time, yes, now. I know that kind of contradicts Pete, what I just said about showing up too early in the parking lot, right? Here's what I tell people like, Hey, please don't freak out my, our, our security guard and show up <laughs> like an hour and a half early. If you happen to be in the area, there's a Chick-fil-A that opens at six 30 right over here. There's a thing over there because I used to have a card. Um, I got, I had a great relationship with the Dunkin' Donuts people. I used to have a card that I fill up $200 a month that I will send people over there and say, Hey, I've got two candidates going over there. They got a meeting starting at such and such time. Take care of them for me. That leaves a lasting impression, Pete. Oh, it worked. I, I believe it. And of all the things <laughs> that I've been surprised by today, you have in a great relationship with the Dunkin' Donuts people is not one of them. <laughs> I can I promise love them. That. Whatever, man. Huh? Free yeah. commercial, free commercial. Exactly. <laughs> Okay, so we kind of touched on this, but um, you know, so this falls under the category of a couple other things: where where you're going, right? Where you're going physically to the location, or how to log in to to the Zoom or or Teams meeting, whatever it might be. Give that a test run ahead of time. Yes. Um, but as at a big company, you know, potentially there may not, you know, you may have interviewed. Uh, I can think of one uh, company that I've worked with for years uh, for staffing. They have uh, an HR. Uh, building at their main corporate building where people will interview for jobs and, and managers will meet everyone there uh, from a different department for coming from a different building, but the actual job is going to be performed somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So don't assume that where you interviewed is, is where you're, you're, you're working now. That's probably a conversation that would have come up, but I don't want to assume that either in this there scenario. You go. So That's right. confirm in advance where you're going or, and we've seen this too. I mean, because people are, you know, people are human and they forget to to cover everything, but employ being in staffing, we get a lot, we get these calls, employees first days getting on a zoom and no one you know, sent them the link, you know, on where to log in. So <laughs> at eight 30, nine o'clock, whatever their start time is supposed to be they're they're sitting there waiting. So that's, that's not good. Again, even if it's not your, 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 your fault as the employee, you know, it's just, you don't want to start your day off with, with something that's going to throw you for a loop. So ask yeah. about that in advance. Where do I go? How do I log in? If that's what you're doing and just cover those bases. It's I got, it's you nailed it. Everything right on the head. I agree a hundred percent with that. All right. Well, good. Well, we, we agree mm -hmm. on that. And then even, um, you know, as simple as, uh, I, I, I want to mention this and I know we talked about this on a podcast not too long ago, but where to park, um, yes. you know, in our office downtown, we use a parking garage 
And mm -hmm. uh, we don't have one connected to our building. So we have various options. We pay for, for parking for employees. Uh, this was, we're not in the office every day now, mm -hmm. but we've always uh, done that uh, it being downtown had parking garages to park in. Sometimes depending on when our office, where our office was may have been connected to the building, but right now it's not. And so we have to give those instructions. And if you're showing up to a downtown office, that, that can be <laughs> really confusing if you're not used to that area, because every downtown has its own sort of unique uh, way of doing things. Wouldn't you agree? I would definitely agree. This is one of those things that I said now it's, I see a trend here, Pete, because we keep this is for the candidate, but I keep moving towards the leadership piece, right? So from the candidate's perspective, yes, this is very important, especially if you go into the downtown area. So if the HR folks or the leaders forget, always ask. Now, from a leadership perspective, again, the HR people trying to make it the first day as welcoming as possible alleviate any questions they may have because when i used to do new employee orientation for four corner resource i was really detailed on that friday you need to come here hit this button we it, I pu i'll put a map a little thing on how to get to the building give me a call i left nothing to the imagination i want them to know i don't want the biggest challenge of the day is finding the office or knowing where to park i don't want that to be the biggest challenge of the day no, you, you yeah. easily, easily avoided. Right. But only yes. if you think about it in advance. So it could either be That's really right. simple or, 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 you know, just, just something that just is, is far from a, a great way to start. That's um, right. And then along those lines is, you know, when you walk, when you get in, you know, where to park, you know, you, you're there at the right time, who to ask for. That's right. Right. I mean, again, you, you don't want to assume maybe it's the manager, but as maybe it's, it's, it's someone new in HR who's an onboarding specialist. I mean, that happens a lot, right? I mean, you're the HR guy. You, 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 uh, oh, you I always make sure I'm like, when you get here, you ask for Ricky, you ask for Kayla, you ask for Judabel, you ask for this person. And I let that person know too. So-and-so is going to be here on Monday looking for you. Here's your checklist to make sure you have everything ready for them. So yes, ask if, if you're not told up front, Ask them and say, who do I ask for? Be really specific with it. Now, a good HR person, after the fifth question, you're like, oh, maybe I need to put a checklist together and give this ahead, right? But again, you have your own checklist. It's right here on zengig.com. We got 10 of them. Go down this list and make sure you make your own. And I'm telling you, you're going to have a great experience and you're going to make an amazing first impression. But Pete, we got one more and this is my favorite. This, this is wait, my favorite. I thought lunch was your favorite. That's why we talked about it. No, well, I, well, I mean, because I could take care of that. <laughs> I could take care of lunch. But can I say it? Can I bring this one? When can you leave? This part right here is so crucial, guys. It really is crucial. Here's why. Because if you don't ask when can you leave and you assume it's at 5 p.m., this is where you need to have a keen eye. Know your environment. Know your surroundings. If it's 5.30 p.m., nobody has left, don't leave. Don't leave. That's obviously not the right time to leave, right? But you should ask people, I mean, ask them, when is a good time to leave? When am I expected to leave? Some people work overtime. That's okay. There's some things, some deadlines that were missed that you have to make up for. No problem with that. But what I don't want you to do is assume that you're leaving at a certain time and you, the brand new person who's supposed to be learning everything and being in training and absorbing everything is the first one to leave. It's just a bad impression. I can't add anything valuable to that. That, 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 <laughs> that, that, that is, that is true. Um, that is true. So we've all noticed it because I've seen people who start on day three. They're the first one out the door. I'm like, why? Why is he leaving? Why, why are we all here? This person's gone. That's when I mess. I, I I assume I messed up and have a conversation the very next day. I don't know if it's an emergency. Right? I don't know if it's anything like that. Or, you know, if they're, uh, you know, on a sports team. I don't know anything like that. So I it's up to me as a leader to check and make sure um, I let them know when it's acceptable to leave. Perfect. Yep. All right. Well, did we cover all the bases? That's the main question. Is there, do we leave anything un uncovered yet? I got a bonus one. All right. I, I have a bonus one. And this is, and just follow me here. Uh, you know, the, this morning, Pete, I was taking my son to school, right? And, you know, I listened to the Howard Stern show every now and then, right? And he was telling, and he was telling a story on, uh, on Sirius XM on when he first started in radio 
He was making $200 a week. And this one guy gave him a shot. And because this one guy gave him a shot, he felt an allegiance to this because this, this person passed away. That's why he's talking about him. But he said anything that the leader that that in, in a new job that he started, anything they put in front of him, he attacked it. He never questioned it. He had a hunger to learn. And that is why he is where he is today. I'm saying all this to tell people when you start on a new job, be eager, be hungry, be willing to learn and be willing to be coachable, coachable people gets things done. Coachable people ends up in leadership positions to coach other people. When you start in an organization, I don't care how many PhDs you have, you have still have much to learn about the organization. Do not let the ego get the best of you, regardless of whether you went to an Ivy League school or not. You've got to be able to be hungry and be willing to do what needs to be done for the organization. That is how you create a foundation to have a solid career with that organization. It's, it's great advice, of course. It's something that uh, we talk about a lot on um, this podcast. It's something that comes up when I interview uh, very successful people, as um, you know, I, I do uh, as well on this show. And you know, there's there's some consistency that you see uh, from those who are successful, and you know, hard work, and and focus and dedication is is a big piece of it, and. You know, my advice to is always in this regard, uh, don't get hung up on what's in your job description. You know, do what's in your job description, but do more. Yes. Now, there's a lot of people who will say, I'm only going to do what's in my job description. That's all they pay me for. That's fine. That's not really how it well, works. Well, I, I well think- wait a minute. It, it, well, if, if you're right, it's not how it works. But if they don't want to move up, they don't want to be recognized. They don't want to be promoted. That's fine. Good. Okay. So, so right? that is a good point of clarification. Yeah. And I, and I want to clarify what I mean by that's not how it works, but okay, correct. If you want to do the bare minimum, then that's how you'll be viewed as someone who does a bare okay. minimum and rewards will not come your way. Right. That's right. <laughs> um, that That's fine. So we're talking, I guess you and I are both assuming that people want to, um, you know, to, uh, to achieve, um, you know, more and, and to, and to have opportunities to advance. Um, and so maybe we shouldn't assume that, but, mm. um, if you want to stand out as an employee, th- th- then, then that's really what we're talking about in, in doing, you know, going above and beyond. Um, and, and generally, you know, that is, um, you know, that's how success will happen, right? It's how that's one right. person will stand out from another. What, what I mean by that's not how it works. I, I, what I meant is job descriptions are not always representative of, of the actual role. And you should Correct. clarify that uh, too. And that's something to do. I would recommend with your, your manager, not on your first day, but within your first couple of weeks, um, you know, at a, at an appropriate time, ask, to review the job description with your manager yes. and just to make sure that you understand the expectation. So you, you probably discuss that in your interview you should um, you should discuss what it takes to be successful in the role, how um, success in the role is determined. Um, but again, I, 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 you know, someone who who's been in staffing and recruiting for so long, I rarely, we've rarely filled jobs is strictly based on a job description because sometimes they're not written by often they're not written by the person who's actually managing the role. Um, and so there's sort of kind of two steps to it. There's the job description that the, um, the hire will be based on right through the interview process. And then there's the job itself. And so sometimes these are very, all very, very different things. So pull out your job description a couple weeks in. We're, we're beyond the first day now. And then you know, cover that with your manager and confirm that those are the things. And yes, as an individual, then you decide, do you want to just check those boxes and you know, you know, just just be good enough? Or do you want to be the best you can be? And that's an individual decision. And so agreed 100%, Pete. Bring it out. Let's have that conversation that shows you have initiative and you really care about the, the the job that you were hired to do. It shows that you want to know what the KPIs are. You want to know where to, to start um, directing the energy of your talents. Now, flip side of the coin, from an HR perspective, from a recruiter perspective, 
before what I tell my recruiters and my team, before we even open up a job, let's talk to the uh, to the um, um, uh, operations and make sure this job description is still legitimate, right? It's still there. From an HR point of view, if I see a job description that says revised 2001, we're going to have a conversation about that, right? <laughs> we need to have a, a, a little bit more of an update. You can't, you, I cannot use a job description that predates Facebook or MySpace. That's, oh, MySpace right? again. Here we are. They had a comment. We okay. Well, I think, I think we've covered it, Ricky. I think we, I think we, we have it. Um, the, Don't these, say it. Don't say it. What did we do? Ah, you said it. I know. We're not supposed to use it. We're not supposed <laughs> to use that kind of violent language, but we did it anyway. Um, uh, that, uh, uh, but but please refer to zengig.com. Yep. Go to our checklist. That's the easiest path um, to to uh, to get answers to these things. We quite uh, literally have a, a checklist. I think it's called what to you know, what to do for your first day or what to. Yep. What no, to I see check, it. What to cover to for your first day before your first day of work. A hundred percent free. I should know it that. Is right there on the site. Yep. Perfect. All right. Yep. Thanks for mm-hmm. clarifying. And uh, we would appreciate you um, you rating us as high as you can uh, if you've listened to the show and subscribe. But also, we would love feedback. So questions at zengig.com. If you want us to talk about a particular subject, hit us up. This is what we do. Ricky and I also go live on TikTok That's right. regularly. So if you don't already follow Zengig on TikTok, please do. Um, or you can, of course, follow me, Pete Newsom, or Ricky, the HR guy. Uh, we all have our own accounts, and we will get on um, live usually once a week and answer yep. questions. But if you ask uh, in advance questions at zengig.com, we'll cover them on the, um, on the TikTok live. So we look forward to, uh, to seeing you there too. That's I'm excited have, for Ricky. TikTok. No, no, same here. Just uh, I'm excited for TikTok. Engage with us. Ask us the questions that you want to ask your, your um, at work, but you kind of don't want to. We'll tell you the real deal. So ask us and uh, we'll just have fun with it. Anonymously is fine too. We like that. That's we'll right. tackle it all. Um, Wear a mask, a screen mask. That's right. <laughs> and we, yeah, we get we get sick of just talking to each other. So um, questions is in gig.com. We look forward to um, uh, to speak with you good too. Drive safe, everyone. Have a good one.